Let's talk about the Cartesian plane. This is something you're going to be using very often in your career in mathematics. And it was named for René Descartes, the French philosopher, mathematician, scientist, etc., who was perhaps most famous for saying, I think, therefore, I am. So far, when we graph things, uh, up until this point, we usually have a graph that looks something like this, and maybe you have a line that goes like that. This is what we're used to seeing, right? And you have an x-axis, and you have a y-axis just like that, and they usually start here at zero, right? And you work your way up, right? You have like one, two, three, then you go this way, one, two, three. But the Cartesian plane is actually something much larger than this. This is actually just a fragment or a fraction of the Cartesian plane. The Cartesian plane actually looks something like this where you have your x-axis and you have your y-axis, just like that. And so what you're used to seeing is just this part of the Cartesian plane, the positive directions, we'll say. So you have your 1, your 2, your 3, you know, 1, 2, 3, and those obviously continue, right, up and to the right. But you can also go down, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. You can also go to the left, negative 1 negative 2, negative 3, and that obviously keeps continuing. And so this Cartesian plane is something that we're going to have to get used to using uh, for graphing all different types of equations, functions, things like that. So first thing you want to know how to do is how to read these types of graphs. So if I have a point, and I'll say that the point is right here, and I ask you, what are the coordinates of this point? Well, the way we write it is in a little set of parentheses like this with a comma in the middle. And the first thing you write is the x value of this coordinate. So if you look down from that point, you get to 3 on the x-axis. So it's at 3. And the y value, you would look to the left over here to see how high it is, right, where it is on the y-axis, and that's 2. So this point you could label as being 3, 2. That's the point 3, 2. If I give you another point and I say, go to the point negative 2, 3, you'd say, okay, where's negative 2, 3? Well, negative 2 is the x value, so you go to the left, and then 3 is the y value, so you go up. So this point here would be negative 2, 3. If I said, go to 2, negative 2, okay, 2, negative 2 would be down here. Again, you have your x value and your y value. If I told you to go to 1, 3, You'd say, okay, 1, 3, up here. If I told you to go to negative 3, negative 2, you'd go, okay, negative 3, negative 2, right here. Just like that. So whenever you have a point on this graph, or on this plane, you should be able to label what that point is, right, its coordinates based on its location. And likewise, if somebody gives you the coordinates of a point, you should be able to plot that point on the graph. Okay, now let's talk about what else we can do with these planes. Um, let's say you're given some data in the form of a table of values. So a table of values just lists your x values and your y values. So let's say I have something like minus 5, minus 3, minus 1, 1, 3, 5, just a bunch of values for x. And then I have a bunch of corresponding values for y. So I have 20, 15, 10, 5, 0, negative 5, something like that. You can interpret the set of data, these numbers in your table of values, as being points. So negative 5, 20 is a point. Negative 1, 10 is a point, just like that for all of these numbers. You can go ahead and you can graph them on this Cartesian plane. So if you look at your x values, you have everything from negative 5 to 5. So I'm just going to label on this graph, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do it on the other side as well. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Try to keep it consistent, right? And then that's the x-axis. But then on the y-axis, you go all the way up to 20. So 20, half of that is 10. Half of that is 5. Halfway between 10 and 20 is 15. So you just want them to be pretty evenly spaced. And then down here, negative 5, just like that. Uh, negative 10, and that'll continue. 
But I do it this way because I want to make it easy on myself to graph these points, right? And if you're doing this on graph paper, you can obviously split up the blocks on your graph paper to be perfect so it's all to scale, right? So first you want to graph your first point, negative 5, 20. So you go negative 5, 20, right there. Then you want negative 3, 15, just like that. Then you want negative 1, 10, just like that. 1, 5, uh, just like that. Then you want 3, 0. Then you want 5, minus 5, just like that. And what you notice is that these points all make up a nice line, right? If you connect these points like this, they make a straight line. And in this case, this is what we would call a linear function. And we're going to talk about that quite a bit in the upcoming lessons.